Yes, God loves you, all right. But one thing you have to remember is we are powerless when it comes to what we want versus what God says must be. God's will will always prevail. What God says will always override our, our desires and what we believe. No, no, no. We must get into the Holy Word of God and know His desires for us and His will for us. And whatever it is we believe, well, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it amounts to nothing. And it could end up sending you to hell. Because many people will live on the false belief that God is only a God of love. He doesn't care what I do. I can live in sin. He still loves me. He's about love. I don't believe he'll judge me. I don't believe that he would send me to hell. Hell's not real. I don't believe that. I believe that we all have our own beliefs and that God loves us no matter where we are, who we are. No, no. God loves you. God created you for his purpose. And for his pleasure. But he is a just God. And his word is clear. No man comes to the Father in heaven. But through Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever shall believeth in him. Shall not perish. But have everlasting life. So I'm sorry people out there. Friend. Strangers. Strangers unbelievers, atheists, even some so-called Christians. Our ways are not God's ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God wins all the time. His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hmm. And we have no say or no power over him but to obey him and his word. His word is true, 100% true. The Holy Bible is his word and his word that, that he gives us when we are born again. He will guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit to all truths. And the Holy Spirit's job, really, is to always point us back to the cross of Jesus Christ where he laid down his life for us so that we may have life and life more abundantly. He paid the price for our sins and our wrongdoings so we don't have to. But we must believe in him and accept that free gift from him and what he did for us on the cross. Believe that he shed his blood on the cross for us, for our sins, that he was buried, he died, and three days later, he rose from the dead. And Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven. You must be born again. You must ask Jesus into your heart to, and to forgive you of your sins. By repenting of the way you used to live. By repenting of all your sins, turn away from them. Turn away from the friends you used to hang around with. You'll want to if you're truly born again. Truly saved, surrendered to Jesus, gave your heart to him. If you really did, you'll no longer want to sin in, in, the, in the sinful nature you were born with. No, you want to be pleasing God and reading his word. You won't want to hang out with the friends that you used to get in trouble with anymore, that you used to hang out with that you know you were doing wrong and going against God. No, he creates in you a new clean heart. And you, you need him to do that for you right now if you haven't done so. And only those who are saved by the blood of Jesus can enter heaven. Only those who are saved by the blood of Jesus. Not by your works, that's for sure. That's an insult to what Jesus did on the cross for us. What he did was enough. The sacrifice he paid for us on the cross was so we don't have to, we don't have to go to hell. 
because the wages of sin is death. Sin has to be paid for, and it's too great of a punishment for us to bear. That's why God sent his son Jesus to bear those, the punishment for us by taking all of our sins upon him and paying for them with his life. And if we accept that free gift, we will be saved and free from the bondage of sin because he'll take that away from us. The desire to sin will no longer be in us. He'll change us from the inside out if we truly believe in him and trust in him with all our heart. It's time for many people out there to wake up and surrender your hearts to Jesus right now before it's too late. You want to make the rapture. You do not want to be left behind. And if you don't believe there's a rapture, well, then you'll be right. For you, you won't be raptured. He'll leave you here to suffer what's coming. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be left behind here to face the judgment of God. And he'll prove to you that he is God and that he, his word is true. For he told us about the rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. The whole Bible, all throughout, from beginning to end, Genesis to Revelation, the Word of God speaks clearly of Jesus and of His coming to redeem us from our sins, and of the wrath of God to come for those who reject Him and who reject His truth. There really is going to be a rapture. Please accept that as truth. Ask God to explain it to you, to reveal it to you. So you too can make the rapture. You need to believe the whole truth of the Holy Word of God. Open it up and read what you've been missing before you miss the rapture. Jesus is coming soon. He loves you so much. He died for you. It's time for you to live for him in eternity with him forever by accepting his free gift of salvation today. For today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow truly could be too late, either by rapture or by you taking your last breath, and you don't want to die, not, not being forgiven and saved by the blood of Jesus. You don't want to die in your sins. You need Jesus. You need Jesus right now before it's too late. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, keep looking up for Jesus. He is coming soon.